I think we were the first bar association to articulate goals that we hoped would guide the profession in the state to increase the number of minorities. I saw it firsthand both as the president, but more importantly as a lawyer, that there were times when lawyers, judges, might not have treated either me or others in a way I thought consonant with our qualifications and abilities. And I thought this was a real problem. I thought it was necessary for us, frankly, to address it. And I was pleased that I had an opportunity to do so in this great bar association. There came a point in 1989 when a group of us met with the then president, Jim Oliensis, and talked about the problem, particularly of African American lawyers and their failure to advance within firms and to partnerships. And we thought the Bar Association ought to have a more active role in that matter. Jim Oliensis heard us out very nicely, and one of the things he decided to do was to establish a special committee on enhancement of minorities in the profession. The chair of that committee was Cyrus Vance, the special committee decided the first thing it should do was to articulate a series of goals and to ask law departments and law firms to sign that statement. It's to increase the number of minorities to a percentage that was roughly 10% of the merits to advance. It also looked to the idea of increasing the number of partners in corporate law departments. It was a thunderclap and a real wake-up call because this wasn't coming from and organized outside interest group. You see, the attack had always been before. This is just about people who are not at the table getting business, trying to force their way in to get business and trying to cloak it in some sort of moral claim. Here you had people who were the dominant players in the bar, in the most important commercial center. Upon reflection, it wasn't an easy process. Um, I mean, it took a while. And there were clearly a number of people who were not too enthusiastic about the exercise. There was a general goodwill feeling at the Bar Association, but a concern that by taking on this matter in the affirmative way we were doing, perhaps we were going too far. Well, it was front page New York Times. I mean, what, <laughs> I was gonna say, what, more can, what more can I tell you? Most of those firms were embarrassed, led, uh, encouraged to do the right thing. And that's why it was important for me to be involved. I said, no, no, this isn't, mythology. There were very few lawyers in New York City who were prepared to say no, and that's what you need when you undertake to make change that's significant. You need someone's commitment whose fidelity to principle is unquestioned, whose standing the profession is uh, second to none. Obviously, we live in a society that we believe that we give people opportunity. We talk about it economically, we talk about it in terms of race, men, women, um, but the reality is we all know that that's not necessarily the case and it's truly a crime. Change is really hard and this is a dramatic change and there have been significant inroads in the last decades. 2004 was the perfect year to really move the diversity initiative forward. Betsy was the president and she was so committed to diversity for a very long time. In the period that I was president, biggest milestone I think was establishing the Office of Diversity here at the association. We were the first bar association to have an Office of Diversity. We had the ability to bring together all different constituent groups concerned about diversity, and we did that with uh, a lot of energy. At that time, there wasn't that same set of open data that was available. I mean, it was right. very, you know, cutting edge at the time. We were the first ones to say that they should start collecting gay and lesbian data. That was seen as controversial at the time, right. and now that's common practice. We sort of trailblazed in terms of talking about some of these issues. I believe one thing that makes the association really effective in advancing diversity and inclusion is that we are constantly cultivating a culture of innovation. I think the significance of, of coming to the New York City Bar Association and participating in these programs at the City Bar, um, it, it just furthers my goals professionally as well. You know, I think after I leave a program, I'm more, more so inspired. invigorated and inspired right. to continue in my career. Absolutely. Uh, and I feel like when I come here, for me, it's like, kind of, it's my professional home. 
To walk into the building of the New York City Bar Association, it's a wonderful feeling. I mean, you can feel the sense of history when you walk in the doors. And I've definitely seen over the last decade a market increase in diverse attorneys joining this association. One of the things it does extremely well is uh, put the issues out in the, in, for consideration. I think you have to have a voice, you have to have someone who frames issues and, and puts them into the profession as a conscience to say, what are we going to do? One of the reasons that I, I shifted career paths from being an in-house lawyer to, to being here at the City Bar was to make a difference. And diversity is one of the key areas where I feel like we can make a difference to make our profession and our membership be stronger. I mean, the diversity that we bring to it makes us stronger. It's not a challenge, it's an opportunity. When people walk in this building, I want them to feel the history, but also the future at the same time. I believe that there are still a lot of vestiges, if you will, of discrimination from the past. We can't escape. I'm not saying that there's a lot of overt racism or sexism or homophobiaism anymore, but there are definitely a lot of subtleties in what we call unconscious bias. And so I think it's extremely important for organizations like the New York City Bar Association to bring attention, to shed light to these things, so that we can help institutions do better uh, in the legal profession. To have had the opportunity to follow in the footsteps of Conrad Harper, he has been an inspiration to many of us in our career. I became a lawyer because I wanted the world to be a more fair place for people, particularly people who for historical reasons bore the brunt of inequity, unfairness, discrimination, oppression. I'm persuaded that the difficulties I had in those days, we had as a profession, have somehow assumed the aura of being a long time ago. The Bar Association has a key role in stimulating firms to do the right thing helping them to achieve those goals. Um, the Bar Association doesn't, I think, really have a role as a policeman, but it does have a role as a resource for providing information and encouragement, and it holds up a mirror to the profession.